guess I, there is enough time to cover the last one, which is also about uh, sentence tagging, or you can call it sequence labeling. These are some data sets for you to explore. The first one is for part of speech tagging. The other one is for named entity recognition. The idea is the same as what we just saw. Characters are gonna end up giving you words. In the previous paper, we were using LSTMs to give us to turn a bunch of characters into a word or a word vector. Here we are gonna use CNFs. These could be one hot vectors for your characters. You put a convolutional neural network on top of it. You can reduce the resolution slightly. You can play around with your stride, the stride of your convolutions. You can then do max pulling, and these are global max pulling. All of these numbers, you average them or find the maximum here and put it here. All of these other numbers, you're going to find the maximum, put it here. These other numbers, find the maximum, put it here. And the last row is going to give you the last column here. And that's going to give you a character representation for your word. You have your word embedding. You have your character representation. You concatenate them. You push them through forward and backward LSTMs. Uh, concatenate again. Put the last layer of your neural network, which is going to give you as many classes as you want. For instance, this is a verb. This is a noun. And you're doing part of speech tagging. And then you can put your CRF layer in the end. Our LSTM is the usual LSTM. So there is nothing special there. There is input gate for get gate, a memory gate, or a memory cell output, and then some portion of uh, your memory you're going to output. That's your LSTM. Our CRF, the intuition behind using CRF, I explained CRFs and the intuition behind it in terms of named entity recognition, for instance, by organization cannot follow the intermediate or inside a person. This can never happen. For part of a speech tagging, you can say that an adjective is more likely to be followed by a noun rather than a verb. That's why the independence assumption here has to break. And then we are going to add these connections here. And that's the CRF layer on top of it. Let's look at this last layer. This is going to give you a generic input sequence. You're going to have a generic sequence of labels. You're going to write a probability for the entire sequence, which is coming out of a softmax over the set of all possible labels, which could end up being huge, which could end up being, if you have 10 classes per each uh, word, this could end up being 10 to the power of the sequence length. So this could end up being huge. Let's first model this this psi function, it's a little bit different from before. Here you look at one of the vectors here, let's say the ith one, it's gonna give you zi. Previously you had a matrix here which wasn't L and L prime dependent. Now it is actually L and L prime dependent. And L here and L prime are the pair of labels. For instance, in this case, i organization and i pair are the pair of labels for you. The other one, this B matrix, you can think of it as the A matrix in the previous two papers. So the only change is that this W is uh, L and L dependent, L prime dependent. You're going to write down the log of your likelihood. You maximize that. And when it comes to actual prediction, you are going to look at the probabilities and pick the label sequence of tags that is going to give you the maximum probability. And then, as I mentioned, evaluating this is costly because this summation is costly. This space is huge. You are going to use dynamic programming. And dynamic programming for this particular uh, framework is going to be called ETRV. Now you can do part of a speech tagging, measure the accuracy on your test data or named entity recognition, F1 score. And F1 score is the average of recall and precision. I think it's a good time for me to stop. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around.